Okay class, this is lab 2-1, uh, series circuits, current relationships. So the purpose of this lab, if I read it from the text here, is to, uh, the current that flows in a series circuit is the same through all parts of the circuit, even though most loads are connected in parallel. This concept is very important in the design of circuits. Control devices are most often connected in series with the load to control the current flowing through the load. As well, high resistance connections act as a series resistances which cause a decrease in power output from the load. To troubleshoot such high resistance connections requires a good understanding of series circuits. So the purpose of this lab is to explore that the current that leaves this source at any given point within this circuit is going to be exactly the same. Now I've connected up some digital meters. I don't think you're going to be able to get a good image of them, but we'll see how it comes out on, uh, on the video. Okay. I've connected up, as the drawing shows in, in the next page there, figure one, we've got three cone heaters all connected up in series. So I've got my power coming out, heading through my ammeter, out of my ammeter up to my first cone heater, through that cone heater over to this one, through that cone heater to, to the next cone heater three, and then returning back to my negative terminal there. This voltmeter is connected up across the source to verify the voltage we are outputting. They are asking us to, uh, to turn the power on and increase it up to 120 volts. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this ammeter around to replace these jumpers along the way in order to see um, that the current, to prove that the current is exactly the same. I've got another volt or a multimeter over here just in case we need to take any voltage measurements, but I think we don't need to do that until the next lab. So, I'm gonna turn power on. I've already preset my value to 120, okay? So it says from steps one through four, we connect everything up, and then the next thing is on step five, turn the power on and slowly adjust the voltage supply to 120. So we're actually a little high, we're 120.5. It's gonna fluctuate a little bit here, okay? Very touchy. But either way, we got roughly 1.9 amps of current on that meter. Okay, so I recorded that. I'm then gonna remove a connector, I'm gonna power down. So now I'm on step eight. I'm going to remove this ammeter from the equation, okay? And it was also connected up down here through the red, okay? I'm gonna now have that ammeter up top here, replacing these ones. So all I've done is I've just interrupted the flow that was on that jumper by inserting an ammeter there. Then I also need another long conductor to leave my power source and to head up to that first cone heater. So now this circuit basically runs out through here, out of that cone heater, through that ammeter, and then back up here, et cetera, et cetera. So then I'm just gonna turn the power on I've left it at exactly the same voltage state that it was at, roughly 120, okay? And we're seeing the 1.9 again there. All right, pretty straightforward. We'll shut it down. I'm then going to take that ammeter out, move it over to that jumper position here, and we would expect the exact same results. Turn that power back on. Okay, 1.9 amps again. All right, nothing's changed, nor did we expect anything to change. Turn our power off. We've got our last one to do now. So we need to interrupt the current flow going from here down to this guy. Come out of there. Okay, that jumper's out. Replace this jumper back in there so that our circuit will complete and work again. So now we're on that last portion. All of the current's flowing through these loads and now we're going through the ammeter on that last jumper going back to negative. Turn my power back on again. We got 1.9 again. No surprises there at all, okay? Next, we're gonna power down. I'm all the way down to uh, step 20 now, okay? And what they say is they want us to connect a jumper across two terminals of the cone heater number two to effectively short circuit one of the cone heaters. So if I just grab 
a small jumper. Okay, and I'm going to place that across those terminals. What I have effectively done now is short circuited that. Now that doesn't necessarily mean it's a short circuit when I turn that breaker on that my, my or turn, turn our power on that my breaker is going to trip because I've got a short circuit. I've only shorted one load out. These two loads, that cone heater there and that cone heater are still connected as they would have normally been, okay? All I've done here is reduced some resistance in that circuit, but we are also going to take uh, keep this voltage the same. So by reducing the circuit resistance and keeping the voltage the same, we should now see an increase in circuit current, okay? So we're going to turn some power back on and see what happens. And it's exactly like I said, we've got 2.8 amps now flowing through here, okay? So if I record that, then that, that's your answer there for step number 21, 2.8 amps, all right? So the current in that circuit increased only because of the uh, reduction or the, the, the limiting of resistance within the circuit by short circuiting that guy there, all right? So next thing we're gonna do, step number 23, it says remove the short circuiting jumper from cone heater two. Okay, all good there. And then uh, remove the connecting jumper between cone heater one and cone heater two. So this one here. So now what I've done is I've created an open circuit. In other words, current is gonna try to flow up here, but it has no completed path to be able to get back to the source. So do we anticipate any current flowing in here? The answer would be no. We can prove that by turning our power on. We're at 120, our source is 120. Actually, it's higher than that. So that says 127 now. This power supply is really fluctuating up and down a lot, okay? But either way, it doesn't matter. I can have that thing cranked way up. We've got no current flowing in there. That says a whole bunch of zeros because this is a wide open terminal here, okay? No path for current to flow back to the source. So that would be zero amps for step 25 in your lab book, okay? We then power down. I guess I could have turned that down, okay? We shut everything off, everything's safe, okay? We clean up our work area and then we will proceed to answer the questions. All right, so that's lab 2-1, series circuits, current relationships.